You might have seen Airbus pilots teasing Boeing pilots with how much they enjoy the benefits from the side stick, like ergonomics, rapid movements, that, or even the extra space for a handy little table allowing them to enjoy their lunch. But that's not all, and Airbus pilots are about to have another reason to give themselves airs, because recently Airbus is assumed to be considering a design of their new side stick. So, if this is the case, what could be the rationale behind this decision? And how is this going to take Airbus to another step forward? Let's find out in this episode of Fligavia, the evolution of fly-by-wire and side sticks. To answer those questions, we first need to understand the evolution of fly-by-wire and side sticks. The Airbus A320 family was the first among Airbus airliners to feature side sticks and comprehensive fly-by-wire technology. But before A320, earlier aircraft, including several military jets dating back to the 1960s, had already utilized side sticks and even fly-by-wire in various capacities. The F-16 fighter jet, which first ascended nearly half a century ago in 1974, was the first operational craft to incorporate a side stick. The concept of fly-by-wire predates even the F-16, with the Canadian CF-105 Arrow often recognized as the initial adopter of the technology, despite not being commissioned into service. Even in the realm of commercial aviation, the A320 wasn't the first to employ fly-by-wire. That distinction belongs to the legendary Concorde. However, the Concorde didn't feature a side stick. Instead, it was operated with the iconic bicycle-style yokes. It's also noteworthy that certain smaller aircraft, such as the Cirrus SR-20 and SR-22, along with their vision jet, utilize side sticks without fly-by-wire systems. In these aircraft, the side sticks function similarly to a side-mounted yoke manipulated with one hand rather than two. Comparisons between Boeing and Airbus often incorrectly conflate side sticks with fly-by-wire systems, a simplification that also affects perceptions of military aircraft. Originally, fly-by-wire was adopted in military aviation to control aerodynamically unstable planes, allowing for the development of agile fighters and distinctively designed crafts like the F-117 and B-2 stealth bomber. The space shuttle also depends on this technology, but in contrast, commercial airliners like the Concorde, which are inherently stable, could technically fly without it. Yet, fly-by-wire brings subsor benefits to these aircraft, including consistent operation across different weight distributions, increased safety, and lighter weights. It streamlines pilot management of various models within a family, such as the A318 through A321, facilitating seamless transitions with little extra training. Notably, fly-by-wire's flight envelope protection is invaluable, maintaining the aircraft within safe flying parameters thereby averting extreme maneuvers and stalls. These are the primary reasons why both Airbus and Boeing have incorporated fly-by-wire in their latest aircraft models. Over the past 30 years, Boeing has introduced two new aircraft, the 777 and the 787, both designed with full fly-by-wire systems. While both manufacturers now concur on the benefits of fly-by-wire, the real contention lies in their choice of flight control mechanisms. There's a little known fact that Boeing's use of yokes over side sticks was not a foregone conclusion. In the late 80 and early 90, as Boeing developed the 777, they were also designing the 7J7, which was remarkable not just for its open fan engine, but for a cockpit design that proposed either a center-mounted stick or a side stick. Although Boeing seriously contemplated side sticks for the 7J7, the project was shelved, yet it informed the 777 development significantly. Yes. If circumstances had differed, we might have seen a 777 equipped with a side stick, but Boeing chose to continue with yokes to keep a consistent cockpit design with the 757 and 767 models. Why Airbus turned to side stick? So, what did Boeing relinquish by choosing yokes, and why had Airbus already transitioned to side sticks? The reasons are multifaceted, encompassing pilot ergonomics and broader practical considerations. For instance, from a design standpoint, installing side sticks in a cockpit is considerably simpler and more space efficient than fitting in two large yokes. Weight is another significant factor. The interconnected yokes in Boeing's fly-by-wire 777 and 787 models are heavier and bulkier 
compared to the compact lightweight side sticks that require less space. This makes side sticks simpler to install, maintain, and replace. Besides, ergonomically, side sticks offer a clearer view of flight displays and the possibility of integrating touchscreens, as Airbus has implemented in the A350. In fact, using side C sticks can result in an 80% weight reduction in the cockpit compared to traditional yokes, according to Collins Aerospace. New active side stick. So why would Airbus consider altering their successful side stick design? The answer lies in the development of active side sticks, which not only relay pilot commands to the aircraft systems, but also incorporate servo mechanisms that provide tactile feedback by moving the sticks and resisting the pilot's inputs. Although the two sticks aren't mechanically connected, they can be programmed to mirror each other's movements, addressing a key critique of current side sticks, the absence of tactile feedback between the left and right controls, particularly noticeable during simultaneous inputs by both pilots. In such instances, Airbus issues an audio alert for dual input. However, hearing is often the first sense to be compromised under intense stress. Another point of contention is the feedback, or rather the lack thereof, from the aircraft's trim system. Typically, Airbus planes automatically adjust their horizontal stabilizer in response to pilot inputs, balancing trim forces. But in certain scenarios, like when systems or sensors fail, the plane may switch to a basic control law like direct law, where it no longer self-trims. In such cases, standard side sticks don't provide tangible feedback to alert pilots that the aircraft is out of trim. It should be clarified here that Airbus has implemented a variety of safety measures, including auditory and visual warning systems. These systems are designed to alert pilots to critical issues, such as the need for manual trim adjustments, which are indicated on the primary flight display. However, despite these precautions, there have been instances where the intense demands on the flight crew have led to missed warnings, with the Air France 447 incident being a notable example. Airbus has since made continuous improvements to its warning systems, particularly in response to the Air France 447 event. The introduction of active side sticks could address these issues and enhance safety further. The question arises as to why active side sticks have only recently been introduced. Part of the reason lies in the history of the side sticks use in military aircraft which were typically single-seater jets. For example, the two-seater version of the F-16 had a side stick that was relatively static, responding mainly to pressure rather than movement, thus minimizing the need for feedback from a second pilot. Another reason for the delay in adopting active side sticks in commercial airliners is technological. For instance, the first consumer gaming joysticks with force feedback appeared in 1997, and they were quite rudimentary. Clearly, the technology was not mature enough when Airbus was developing the A320 in the 1980s. Nevertheless, active side sticks have now made their debut. Three aircraft models have incorporated them as a standard feature. The Gulfstream G500 and G600 business jets were the first to be equipped with active side sticks, followed by additional Gulfstream variants. The Embraer KC-390, a twin-engine cargo jet comparable in size to the C-130 Hercules, was next. Lastly, the Russian Irkut MS-21, or MC-21, also boasts active side sticks, though its entry into passenger service may be delayed. The MS-21 was initially poised to be the first commercial airliner with active side sticks, but was later hampered by the Ukraine conflict in 2022. The avionics, including the side sticks, were not manufactured in Russia, and due to current sanctions, it's uncertain what systems the MS-21 will ultimately use, if it enters service at all. This could lead to a lengthy re-engineering process for Russia. As for the possibility of another airliner with active side sticks debuting before the MS-21, it's unlikely that Airbus or Boeing will introduce completely new models soon. Yet, there's potential for active side sticks to be retrofitted into existing aircraft that currently have conventional side sticks. Side sticks are essentially electronic devices, and like all electronics, they can be upgraded. This wouldn't be a first. The earliest Airbus A320s featured cathode ray tube, or CRT displays, and ran on Intel processors from 1982, both of which have been replaced by modern systems. Side sticks are designed as line replaceable units LRU, making them relatively easy to swap out, which is one advantage over yokes. 
Upgrading to active side sticks would likely necessitate broader system updates, but aircraft systems are generally designed to accommodate such enhancements. The new sticks would require built-in servos, possibly enlarging the line replaceable units, or LRU, but advancements in electronics should mitigate size concerns. If active side sticks fit in a Gulfstream, they should also fit in the spacious cockpit of an A320. Benefits. Active side CU sticks offer several benefits over current designs. Firstly, they provide pilots with immediate feedback when the other pilot is making inputs, helping to determine who should have control. Secondly, they alert pilots to true and trim issues in degraded control law situations. And finally, when the autopilot is engaged, the stick movements reflect actual control surface deflections, serving as a visual indicator to the pilots. These advantages are similar to what Boeing pilots experience with their yokes. However, active side sticks could also bring benefits not found in Boeing cockpits, such as reduced system weight, easier maintenance, improved ergonomics, and the convenience of the tray table. Who would make active sticks? While retrofitting existing aircraft with active side sticks is technically feasible, practicality and implementation are considerations. Currently, BAE Systems manufactures active side sticks for Gulfstream and Embraer's KC-390, while Radier Figiac, part of Collins Aerospace, produces them for the Irkut MS-21. Interestingly, Radier Figiac also supplies Airbus with side sticks, suggesting that Airbus's supplier is already experienced in active stick technology. This could imply that the MSS-21's active stick design is an evolution of Airbus's passive design. Concluding overall, active sticks appear to address the shortcomings of previous systems, offering only benefits. However, standard operating procedures and training will need to be updated to accommodate such a change. The manufacturer of the passive side sticks for the Airbus A220 remains unknown, but retrofitting the A220 might be more straightforward due to the smaller pilot pool and slower production compared to the A320. Airbus might consider introducing active side sticks for the A350 first, then extending the upgrade to single aisle models, which seems like a viable strategy. So what is your opinion? Do you think this transition will soon happen? Please let us know in the comment section and don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it.